Okay, right now on Capitol Hill, the Obama strategy to defeat ISIS is under the microscope. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee opens its hearing on formally authorizing the use of military force. And top Obama officials will face a grilling from skeptics on both sides of the aisle. Here's the Obama proposal. It would set a three-year limit on the president's authority to wage war against ISIS. Some Republicans fear that is limiting. And the White House would be limited on the use of ground troops, but they would not be banned altogether. Some Democrats worry that this power is too open-ended. So let's talk about all of this. Joe Johns is CNN senior Washington correspondent. Elise Lappet is our global affairs correspondent. And Lieutenant General Michael Barbero served uh, three tours in Iraq. He joins us now. Also, Colonel Cedric Layton is a former member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Um, thanks to all of you for being with me. Joe, I want to start with you. Tell, tell us again the purpose of this hearing. Uh-oh, Code Pink. Code Pink's in the room already, Joe. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Co Code Pink is an ever-present uh, presence, if you will, on Capitol Hill, especially on issues of war. Look, we're expecting to see the Secretaries of State, uh, Defense, and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs at this hearing. Important to say the president's proposal is a draft considered a starting point. The authorization of military force uh, the White House is calling for is very limited in scope. It sunsets or expires in three years. As you said, Carol, ground forces would not be used except in the most limited ways. What is slightly unclear here is what would happen to the broad authorization of use of force that was passed in 2001 in the Bush administration, for example, whether the old one would be superseded uh, if a new one is passed. The White House says that's something that will have to be worked out at another time. But if that's true, then the president would seemingly have both resolutions to justify use of force at his disposal at any given time for the rest of his administration. The administration appears in this to be threading a needle between those on the left who are weary of war and don't want any more of it, and those on the right who say the administration needs to be able to threaten the full use of the military uh, against ISIS, Carol. Okay, and, and on, on hand to testify is the Secretary of State John Kerry, Ashton B. Carter, who's the Secretary of Defense now, and General Martin Dempsey, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. They will be grilled after opening statements from the Chairman of this committee, Senator Bob Corker, a Republican, and the ranking Democratic member Bob Menendez will also give a five minute opening statement. And then each of those witnesses will give opening statements and, of course, take questions from the sitting senators. Um, General, I don't mean to be cynical here, but, but is this hearing a way of time because last I checked America is already participating in a war against ISIS. Well I'm not uh, a constitutional expert but we are using force in Iraq have been uh, doing it in Syria uh, for months now. The question is when the questions that need to be asked is the strategy and the application of this force sufficient to achieve the stated end state of, of, of the strategy which is to, to defeat ISIS. I don't think it is. I don't think uh, 2,800 forces and uh, uh, a series of, of airstrikes uh, will be sufficient. So it is worthy to having that discussion. It is worthy having that discussion because I think, Colonel, most Americans want to know um, a strategy. They want it laid out in black and white. Will these hearings achieve anything near that? I don't think so, Carol, and the reason I don't think so is that uh, this document, the AUMF, is really a document that is supposed to give an authorization to use military power. Uh, the strategy part of it should have been developed long ago, and what you're seeing here is, in essence, a result of some very muddled processes here in Washington, and that's very unfortunate because these processes are pretty well defined in the Constitution, and the military is used to really reacting to these processes and implementing what the result is and we should be doing that and we should be doing it very carefully we should understand exactly what we're getting into but we also should do it without our hands tied behind our backs and Elise, it, it's fascinating to me that um, the Secretary of State, John Kerry, will testify. Of course, he's the one, in part, negotiating with Iran on this nuclear deal. And all but two of the Republicans sitting on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee signed this letter to Iran. It's just sort of ironic, right? Well, it's ironic and interesting, Carol, because what the Obama administration has really tried to do here is kind of really separate the Iranian nuclear issue from the issue going on in Syria with ISIS. And even though 
Uh, Secretary Kerry speaks with his Iranian uh, counterpart, Foreign Minister Zarif. They're really not getting into that much detail on what's going on on the ground in Syria. And the question is, I think that the Obama administration is hoping, is if they could get that nuclear deal behind them, can the U.S. work with Iran trying to uh, combat ISIS? Clearly, Iran, no uh, friend of ISIS and works uh, on behalf of uh, the President Bashar al-Assad in Syria. Uh, the question is, is Iran ready for something like that? And, and when you hear the supreme leader of Iran um, talking, it looks like they're not. So I think Secretary Kerry will be uh, grilled by these senators on, on the correlation between the nuclear agreement, those nuclear negotiations, and, and Iranian behavior in the region. You can't separate that also from the Syrian civil war. And I think Secretary Kerry will be asked a lot about Iranian behavior on behalf of the Syrian regime, Carol. I'm sure. Okay, you guys stand by. I need to take a break right now. We'll be back with much more in the newsroom.